Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines. We're planning to add more dedicated step-by-step -step build videos to the channel, and so we asked which of these you would like to see in a recent video. Well, we have a clear winner. Over 53% of you said you wanted to see this. It's a resin 1 tenth scale bust of a US 82nd Airborne paratrooper from the Normandy invasion. This high quality piece is made by Young Miniatures and was a joy to build and paint. Young offer an amazing range of historical and military subjects, all of them full of character and some of them you will recognise from movies. If you're curious to know more, watch our review and if interested you can get them from Hysterex agents in the UK. Usually we tend to build 135th scale vehicles, but painting a bust like this is a welcome distraction. It's not really our strong point, but you asked for it and so here it is. We will cover everything, including our mistakes, from start to finish, from preparation to the final finishing touches. We used a variety of paints and techniques, but the bulk of the painting was done with acrylics from the Vallejo range. Most of our figures are painted with acrylics. As you'll see, they offer great subtle effects and colour intensities that can be gently and controllably built up. So let's get underway. Here's what you get in the box from the manufacturer. It's a superb resin casting, the moulding is crisp and detailed, there are plenty of finely reproduced accessories, and the face and helmet especially are excellent. It's packaged in a safe and sturdy cardboard box. The model comes in Young's usual yellowish resin, and there are no impurities or air bubbles. The choice of subject was an immediate draw for us. The airborne units of World War II and beyond are an area of special interest. There's something appealing about this elite breed of fighting men. They're dropped behind enemy lines, often under heavy fire. Using just what they can carry, they fight and survive, while being almost completely cut off from friendly units. To dive into the unknown and fight in complete isolation means that paratroopers of whatever nation are a subject of great admiration and respect. What greater airborne operation to immortalise this type of warrior in miniature than D-Day? Faced with the chance to build and paint a figure from one of the two famous US airborne units on June the 6th, who can resist? Maybe you're used to working with plastic, but resin is slightly different in its behaviour and how you glue it. You'll need the following tools. Some form of fine saw or razor saw is necessary. We often use this Revel saw set with interchangeable blades. You can also get blades that will fit into your Exacto type knives. You'll need these sorts of craft knives or scalpels for cutting detailed parts. And sanding sticks help you clean up those parts. To speed things along, you'll often see us use a variety of mini craft motor tools, including a mini drill and mini sander. They're a quick way to remove the resin pouring plugs. Because you do not want to be breathing in polyurethane resin dust, you must take adequate safety precautions. Unlike a plastic kit, you'll tend to find larger pouring plugs and a bit more wastage. Whether it's by sanding or cutting, the objective is to part the piece from its plug delicately. Try to cut near to the plug rather than directly next to it at the join. Resin is brittle and fragile, it's better to take your time and work away gently at the piece. Nibble away at it rather than going straight in for a cut. In fact, it's fine to leave some resin and then remove it with a mini drill or by sanding. With complex shapes like the helmet, you have to grind it away with great care and edge cautiously towards the actual part. You can see us using a variety of hand tools and motor tools to get rid of the excess resin. Some parts can also be drilled to aid positive fitting or painting using small pins, sticks or rods later on. All the tinier or more fragile bits are carefully cut away with craft blades. Pretty quickly we had the parts cleaned up and sanded, ready for priming in the paint booth. We did this using acrylic surface primers.
This provides a sound base for painting and allows blocking out of the colours. Because we drilled out some of the pieces, they can be mounted on wooden sticks for handling. At this stage, we actually did two things more or less simultaneously. We began on the face and started the uniform badges. As you'll discover, the patches caused us a bit of bother and we had to redo them. So, for the sake of this video, we will focus first on the face. That's the more logical order. We tend to start with the face generally anyway, as the character of the whole model usually begins by getting the face right. Step one then is to pick out the eyes using white. In this case, a primer. We then used a brown to draw circles where the iris and pupils would be. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, just natural looking. You can underline them too. Keep checking to see that the spacing is equal and balanced. Step two. Next, a blue is mixed up and added to the central area. This is for the iris. Start darker for the outside areas, then lighten towards the center. We added more of the lighter shade as necessary. You'll notice that paint is above the eye. This is because it can be helpful to check the application of paint near the eye before actually going in and painting it and potentially messing it up. With the eyes filled in, step three is to touch up with white. You can then pick out the pupil in the center using black. Using a bit of white, you can add a highlight to the iris too. With that done, some neatening up can occur. You can always touch up with white and you can continue to outline the eye as you go to give it shape and definition. Though not perfect, the eyes are convincing enough when painted this way. You can use a darker colour like the brown seen here to crudely block out the area around the eye. We find this helps to immediately see if the finished effect will work. With that done, it's time to add some flesh colours to the face and finish bringing our trooper to life. For the flesh painting, we'll be using an excellent set from Vallejo. It comes with a fantastic range of shades, but what really helps is the step-by-step -step guide. If you want to know more, you can see our video review. It's now you're going to see how these paints become extremely effective when built up in thin, translucent layers. Next time, the face gets its colours blocked out and shadows and highlights applied. Tune in then to see the next steps in the build series of our 82nd Airborne Paratrooper from D-Day. Please don't forget to subscribe and give us a Facebook like. We're also on Twitter and Google+. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Thanks for watching and bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.